My next guest is a respected author, commentator, and conservative activist. He's got a brand new book, and it's all about how the original fight against tyranny right here in America and the brave colonists who lit the fuse of the American Revolution. And he says the story of Bunker Hill in particular is a story for all time. Please welcome to the show, Ned Ryan. Good to have you here, Ned. Thank you. Uh, great to be here. I, uh, I, I think our audience might know you through your dad, and I know you get this a lot. It's sort of like I'm known as Sarah's dad. That's right. But you're also known as Jim Ryan's son, the That's famous right. Olympian. We're That's in right. the middle of the Olympics right yeah. now. And so uh, runner for Kansas, first high school student ever to break the four-minute right. mile. Three-time Olympian, so world record holder in the mile. Pretty impressive. And a great Extremely. guy. Went to Congress. Got the Presidential Medal of Freedom last year from President Trump. Wonderful. And, uh, just an incredible man, uh, noble man. And, and I agree with you on all of that. But you know what? He raised a pretty good son. Ned, you've turned out Thank all right. And this book is, is kind of a surprising story that we don't really hear much about. You focus a lot in this book on Dr. Joseph Warren. And yeah. I got to tell you, that's a head scratcher for me. Who was this guy? So Joseph Warren, in his first inaugural address, Ronald Reagan called him one of the greatest of the founding fathers. And people don't know the story of Dr. Joseph Warren in part because on the day of Bunker Hill, had to borrow a musket, had to borrow a horse, rides to Bunker Hill. Sounds like a Democrat. He's borrowing everything from... Some... Goes to fight. Uh, goes to fight and says, put me where the fighting's the heaviest. You have to understand, he was really? 34 at the time. He had been president of provincial Congress. He had just been made major general in the new colonial army. He didn't have to fight. Yeah. Put me where the fighting's the heaviest. He fights that day, and on the retreat out of, out of the earthen redoubt, uh, he's killed, uh, covering the American retreat. Mm. And, and people have said, in fact, one of his enemies said, if... if Joseph Warren had not died that day, we might never have heard of George Washington. This man was a spectacular, singular man. Mm. So the, the book does focus on Joseph Warren, but it also focuses on some of the bigger themes. Why did Englishmen, 85% of Massachusetts yeah. at the time, was English, direct English lineage. Why did English start shooting at each other? And people say it was the Stamp Act, it was the Tea Act, but really it was about the fundamentals of who makes the laws, who governs, where are these laws drawn from? And the colonists truly believed that they had, transcend they had rights given to them by a transcendent creator. Mm. And they believed that those rights, since no earthly power had given them, no earthly power could revoke them. And so they considered these ideas sacrosanct, and Parliament and the King's ministers at the time said, no, we think these are more of a series of suggestions. You'll do what we say, you will comply, and if you don't, we'll send more troops, we'll send more warships. And Joseph Warren and Sam Adams and John Hancock and Paul Revere said, we don't think so. We believe these rights are worth fighting for, and so they fought. I mean, our country, the story of it really is an overthrow of tyranny, an overthrow of overreach that's of right. authority. It, it's, it's principle defiance in the face of authoritarianism. And that's why I said Bunker Hill is a story for all time, because yeah. it really is human nature. What do we do when we are confronted with authoritarianism? What do we believe about rights? And I think this is a big conversation for us as an American people. Where do our rights come from? And if we truly God. believe that our yeah. rights come from, from a transcendent creator mm -hmm. and government doesn't give them, I mean, that changes the entire conversation about what's taking place in this country today. But we're living in a time when even the mention of God in the public square is considered out of bounds. We shouldn't be talking about God. But we, I, I think what you're saying is we can't talk about America without talking about God. You can't because the, the, the founders of the free American republic truly believed in this transcendent creator. It's in our declaration, right? That, that we believe that these rights given to us, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, were created by a creator who gives us these rights. And that's the basic premise of the free American Republic. And so there's a reason that those on the other side of the debate really don't wanna talk about transcendent rights because then you have to talk about a creator and I always say they might start to think there might be other obligations to a creator who gives us our rights. You know, it sounds like that uh, the book, The Adversaries, might be kind of timely for what we're going through because we, we are seeing a level of tyranny where the government is telling us, you can't go to church, you can't go to that store, you will wear this mask, on and on it goes. And I begin in the, the, in the author's note saying, history done well is like the wind at our backs. And I wrote mm. this book in a certain style because I wanted history to be approachable. Yeah. I wanted people to be able to read it and understand, but at the same time to be inspired. History done well should inspire us into action. At the same time, I wanted people to understand these men were facing real threats to their lives, to their livelihood. When Joseph Warren gave the fifth anniversary speech in the Old South Meeting House, March 6, 1775, it was in front of 5,000 Bostonians, but it was also in front of 30 or 40 British officers who were armed, who would come, there were rumors, they would assassinate anyone who gave that, 
that talk that day. Mm. And he still spoke with boldness and determination about freedom, about what their rights were. These, they were confronted with real danger and they still did the right thing because they believed so strongly in their rights. And, and they believed, not only did they believe they had a right, they also believed they had an obligation to defend those rights. I think that's what makes this message so powerful because a lot of people are afraid, just right. afraid to speak out. Ned, I appreciate what you're doing with Thank the you. book. I also appreciate what you're doing with American Majority to Thank get you. people elected to school board, city council, it's all the way action. up to uh, Congress. That's where we change the country. Right. And uh, thanks. Thanks Thank for your time you. tonight. The book is called The Adversaries, a story of Boston and Bunker Hill. It's available right now. And I'll tell you, we could all use a good reminder of the spirit that made this country so very great.